Hello everyone. In today's video, I am going to show you how to create a retro cinema title in Premiere Pro, as you can see on the screen. This title is great for documentary films and any retro style cinema. The retro cinema title captures the classic essence of movie theaters and evokes nostalgia in your audience. We will use some of Premiere Pro's built-in effects to achieve this retro cinema title. Before we begin the tutorial, let's take a moment to discuss our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. With Envato Elements, you gain access to an extensive library of high-quality music tracks, stock footage, video templates, graphic templates, presentation templates, and much more. With one subscription, you get unlimited downloads, so you can explore and experiment without any limits. Envato Elements integrates seamlessly with popular creative software like Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and After Effects. So, you can work effortlessly with your favorite tools. No matter the scale of your project, Envato Elements offers unbeatable value. Embrace your creativity and elevate your projects with Envato Elements. I will give the link in the description and you will get extra bonus. Now let's go to the tutorial. Alright, now we are inside Premiere Pro. As you can see on the timeline, I have got a video clip. First of all, we will give this video a retro look and add some text. Let's move over to the Essential Graphics panel to add some text. Then, go to the Edit panel. After that click on this new layer icon. Next, we have to click on Text. Let's zoom the program monitor. Now, I am going to add some text. You can use any text that you need. After that let's change the font of the text. I am going to use Montserrat black font. By the way, you can use any font that you like. Next, I am going to change the fill color of the text. Here, I am going to use the mustard yellow color. You can use any color that you like. Next, click on OK. Now, you can see the text is mustard yellow color. Next, we have to add a stroke to the text. That's why, click on this box to enable the stroke. Here I am going to select the black color for the stroke. Then click on OK. Let's make the stroke size around 8. In the next step, I am going to add a shadow to the text. Click on this box to enable the shadow. First of all, let's make the opacity value of the shadow 100%. Next, let's make the distance value of the shadow around 8. After that, let's make the blur value of the shadow around 0. Again, we have to add another shadow to the text. Let's click on this plus icon to add another shadow. First of all, let's make the opacity value of the shadow 100%. Next, let's make the distance value of the shadow around 15. After that, let's make the blur value of the shadow around 0. Again, we have to add one more shadow to the text. That's why, click on this plus icon to add another shadow. First of all, let's make the opacity value of the shadow 100%. After that, let's make the distance value of the shadow around 20. And then, let's make the blur value of the shadow around 0. Now, you can see the changes in the text. Let's zoom out the program monitor. Now, click on this icon to center align the text. From the program monitor, let's select the top text. And then, make the font size around 222. After that, let's select the bottom text. And then, make the font size around 333. Next, we have to make the leading distance value around minus 134. And then, let's make the scale size around 94. Alright, now you can see on the program monitor, our text is ready. Now we need to reposition the text. Let's select the text layer from the Essential Graphics panel. Let's make the X position value around 1907. And then, let's make the Y position value around 443. Now you can see on the program monitor, the text is perfect for me. Let's move over to the effects panel to add an effect. This is a corner pin effect. 
Let's drag and drop this corner pin effect to this text layer. Let's move over to the effect controls panel to customize the corner pin effect. Here you can see the corner pin effect. As we know that the corner pin effect is used to manipulate the perspective and position of a video, image, or text within a frame. It allows you to adjust the four corners of a clip independently, effectively warping or distorting the content to match the perspective or shape of a surface within the frame. Let's customize the corner pin effect. From the upper left parameter, let's make the X position value around minus 1200. Then, from the upper right parameter, let's make the X position value around 5040. Next, from the lower left parameter, let's make the X position value around 200. In the last step, from the lower right parameter, let's make the X position value around 3640. As you can see on the program monitor, the adjustment of the text is perfect. In the next step, we have to add two more texts in the same text layer. I have got the text in my notepad. Let's copy the first text and move over to the Essential Graphics panel. Then, click on this new layer icon. After that, click on Text. As you can see on the program monitor a new text has been created. Let's change the text. Let's make the leading distance value around 0. After that, we have to make the scale value around 33. And then, let's select the Montserrat Extra Bold font. By the way, you can select any font that you like. Next, we have to change the position of the text. Let's make the X position value around 1230. And then, let's make the Y position value around 1710. After that, we have to select this right align text icon. Now we are done. As you can see, our first text is ready. Now, we have to add another text. That's why, we have to duplicate this first text one time. Let's right-click on this text layer. And then, click on Duplicate. Now you can see this is our duplicated text. Make sure the text is selected. And then, we have to make the X position value of the text around 3499. Now, I am going to change the text. Let's open the notepad. Now I am going to copy the second text. After that, let's select all the existing text. After that, paste the copied text here. By the way, we will keep all the text in capital letters. That's why, select the text and click on this all caps icon. Next, select this left side text. And then, let's make the X position value around 1053. Now we are done. As you can see, our alt text is ready. We don't need to add any text. Now we have to apply some effects to make the text retro style. Firstly, we will add fade in and fade out effects to this text. Let's go to the effect controls panel. And then, move the time indicator to the beginning of the text. Now click on this stopwatch icon of the opacity panel to create the first keyframe. And make the opacity value around 0%. Next, move the time indicator 11 frames forward. And here, we have to make the opacity value around 100%. Then, move the time indicator to the end position of the text. Next, click on this icon to create the last keyframe, and make the opacity value around 0%. Again, move the time indicator 11 frames backward. And here, we have to make the opacity value around 100%. Now we are done. Our fade in and fade out effect has been applied. In the next step, I am going to add color to the fade in and fade out positions. That's why, move over to the effects panel to add a color effect. This is a tint effect. Let's drag and drop this tint effect to this text layer. Now, move over to the effect controls panel to customize the tint effect. For the tint effect, I am going to select a red color. By the way, you can select any color that you like. In the next step, let's move the time indicator to the beginning of the text. And now, we have to move the time indicator for frames forward. 
And here, we have to click on this stopwatch icon of the amount to tint, to create the first keyframe. Next, let's move the time indicator 5 frames forward. Now click on this icon to create the second keyframe. And make the amount value around 0%. Next, move the time indicator to the end position of the text. From here, move the time indicator 4 frames backward. Now click on this icon to create the last keyframe. Next, let's make the amount value around 100%. Again, we have to move the time indicator 5 frames backward. And here, let's make the amount value around 0%. Now we are done. As you can see on the program monitor, our fade in and fade out effect has been applied with red color. It looks cool. Now we have to apply a print shake effect. That's why I am going to apply a ready made print shake effect preset. I will give the download link of the print shake effect preset. You can download this for free. Let's move over to the effects panel to import the print shake effect preset. Go to the preset panel and then right click on it. Next, click on import presets. Now browse to the folder where you downloaded the print shake preset. Let's select the preset and then click on open to import the preset. I have already imported the preset, so I don't need to import again. After importing the preset you can see here the print shake effect. Now, let's drag and drop this print shake effect to this text layer. If we play the video, you can see the print shake effect has been applied perfectly. For a better preview, we have to render in and out. You can do this from the sequence panel. Let's preview the text. As you can see the print shake effect has been applied perfectly. Now we have to add a black bar to give the retro look to this footage. I have already got two black bars. Full HD and 4K. I will give the download link of this black bar, you can download them for free. By the way, I am going to use this 4K black bar. Let's drag and drop this black bar to the timeline in video layer 3. And then, increase the duration of the black bar. Now you can see the black bar has been added to the video. In the next step, we have to create an adjustment layer to apply some effects. That's why click on this new item icon, and then, click on the adjustment layer. Now, you can see an adjustment layer has been created. Let's drag and drop this adjustment layer into the timeline. Next, increase the duration of the adjustment layer. After that, move over to the effects panel to add an effect. This is a Lumetri color effect. Let's drag and drop this Lumetri color effect to this adjustment layer. Now, let's move over to the Effect Controls panel to customize the Lumetri color. Firstly, open the Basic Correction. Now, we have to make the saturation value around 99. And then, let's make the contrast value around minus 8. After that, we have to make the highlights value around 25. Next, make the shadows value around minus 25. Now, let's make the white's value around minus 3. Lastly, we have to make the black's value around 10. In the next step, let's open the curves panel. And, make sure the white color is selected. Now, we have to adjust the color, as you can see on the screen. I think this is perfect for me. It looks like retro movie color. Next, move over to the effects panel to add another effect. This is a solid composite effect. Let's drag and drop this solid composite effect two times on this adjustment layer. Now, let's move over to the effect controls panel to customize the solid composite effect. Firstly, from the top solid composite effect, we have to select a black color. And then, from the blending mode, we have to select screen. Now you can see the second solid composite effect. From the blending mode, we have to select multiply. 
In the next step, let's move over to the effects panel to add some effects. Firstly, I am going to apply the Gaussian blur effect. Let's drag and drop this Gaussian blur effect to this adjustment layer. Next, we have to apply another effect. This is a unsharp mask effect. Let's drag and drop this unsharp mask effect to this adjustment layer. Again, we have to add another effect. This is a noise HLS auto effect. Let's drag and drop this noise HLS auto effect to this adjustment layer. Now, we have to move over to the effect controls panel to customize all the effects. First of all, from the Gaussian blur effect, we have to make the blurriness value around 5. And then, you can see the unsharp mask effect. From the unsharp mask effect, we have to make the amount value around 75. Next, let's make the radius value around 8. In the last step, here you can see the noise HLS auto effect. From the noise parameter, we have to select grain. Now, let's make the hue value around 1%. After that, let's make the lightness value around 10%. Now we are done. Our retro cinema title is ready. If we play the video, you can see the preview. For a better preview, we have to render in and out. You can do this from the sequence panel. Let's preview the full video. As you can see on the program monitor, our retro cinema title is ready. It looks great. In this way, you can create retro cinema titles in Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like the video and leave a comment.